Lesson 9.4, <clears throat> page number 643. And this section is called Negative Exponents. Negative Exponents. Boy, if you thought you were having enough trouble with the positive exponents, now I'm throwing some negative ones in there for you. Um, you'll find out, though, the way the game's played with negative exponents isn't really going to be too much different than what you're, you've been doing with exponents. Uh, the negative will uh, not confuse you, hopefully. But we've got an example, our first example on page 643, example 1. We've got 2 with a negative 3 up there for an exponent. Now, what we've done before, let's say, let's throw this out for right now, and let's just write 2 cubed. If you remember, that means 2 times 2 times 2, okay? Which means we get 8 for an answer. This negative has a different kind of value or connotation or meaning when it is in front of an exponent. It does not mean um, a negative number. What it means is it means it, it tells you where a place value is. Um, actually, what it's doing is it's telling you where the 2 and the 3, the exponent 3, go. Um, it's a it's a way of writing a number so that you can work with the number simply and easily without fractions and then when you want to get rid of that negative exponent you do some moving around so what that means is I know it's really confusing when I do that without actually showing you what that negative says is that we are going to take our two let me get a different color here our two and our three and move it to the opposite position fractionally than where it is. So right now, our 2 to the negative 3 can be written as a fraction as 2 to the negative 3 over 1. What this negative sign says is it's not in the right place. In order for it to be in the right place, this negative needs to be a positive. In order to turn it into a positive, we're going to take the 2 and the 3 and move it to the opposite position that it's in. And then the negative disappears because now the 2 and the exponent are in the right position. When they were up here, they were in the wrong position. That's why the negative was there. When you put it in the right position, the negative disappears. And it just becomes 2 thirds or 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 2 cubed equals 8. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 8 because the 2 and the 3 move to another position. What did not happen is these did not flip over. This 1 did not move up here and this moved down here. This 1 is up here only because when we moved our 2 cubed down there was nothing up here and something had to be up here so a 1 appears. So for example if I have x y to the negative 2. That negative 2, that negative is only on the y squared. It is not on the x. So what I do in order to get that y or this negative to disappear, to get the y and the 2 in the proper position, I need to move it to its opposite position. Right now it's in the numerator. It's supposed to be in the denominator and that makes it positive. But notice the x did not move. The x was not part of that negative. Another example would be as if I had an x, y to the negative 2, and I had a 4 down here. Well, there's no negative on the 4, there's no negative on the x, on their exponent, so they stay where they're at. So the x stays there, the 4 stays there, what moves is the y squared. It moves to its correct position, gets rid of the negative. So remember that when you do that. The only thing that moves is the, the, uh, the number here, the uh, base number, and the, and the exponent. Those two are the only things that move up and down. If, for instance, I had this, now my negative or my y squared is on the bottom. This negative sign says, uh-uh, you're not in the right position. You can work with it in that position, but your final answer, it needs to be in the right position. So what that means, I don't have one on my three, so it stays where it's at. But 
my Y has to move to the correct position now, and when it's moved up to the correct position, the negative goes away. I just put that over 1 just to show that it was a fraction and it left from the denominator to the numerator. When you write it as an answer, it's just going to be written as 3y squared. Okay. Well, let's keep plugging along here. Um, if we have something like negative 3 and it's in the negative 2 position, what I suggest doing with these when you just have numbers is put them in the right position. You want to really try to get these to be positive. Um, sometimes you want to get them to be positive right away, sometimes later. It really doesn't matter and you'll get the hang of it and, some, and you'll find out that sometimes it's easier to get rid of this negative exponent first, sometimes last. So you'll just have to kind of get used to it and you'll discover which works best for you. But you cannot square this negative 3 with a negative sign in front of it. That has to be a positive before you take negative 3 times negative 3 because that negative will mess you up. So let's put that negative 3 in the right position first. Right now it's written like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the negative 3 down here and square it. So now that we moved it down it goes away and 1 over negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 and you get an answer there of 1 9th. Alright, so let's look at some problems on page 644. Let's look at example 4. 2 to the 5th power times 2 to the negative 7th power. Alright, remember you've got two, two things here. The only way you can combine these is if these are the same numbers. If this was a 4 and this was a 5, you couldn't combine them. You'd have to take the 4 to the 5th power and the 2 to the negative 7th power, do them separate, and then combine them. But since they both are the same base, you can combine these. And what this means is 2 to the 5, remember you add exponents when you multiply, 2 to the 5 plus negative 7. What is 5 plus negative 7? Is negative 2. And what they'll do is they'll say, don't leave this with a negative exponent. So we're going to have to change this. 1 over 2 squared equals 1 over 4 for your final answer. All right. Let's keep moving along here. Example. Well, example 5 is pretty much what we just did, but let's put it on here anyway, since we're going to go into something new after this example. x to the minus 12. Again, our bases are the same. All we're going to look at are these two, and we're going to add them. 9 plus negative 12. 9 plus negative 12 is negative 3 and this is just the same as x to the minus 3 over 1. We're going to bring this to its rightful position, put a 1 there, and we get 1 over x cubed. We can do nothing with that. We don't know what x is, so we can't continue on with that. But we did get rid of the negative exponent. Okay, I'm going to turn this off and we're going to look at section B division with exponents on page 644. Do a couple of examples on this next video and uh, turn you loose on 9.4.